Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Trash Academy. Yo me amo Liceo. My name is Eliseo, and today we're going to be talking about the life cycle of plastics from start to finish, including what is used to make plastic and what happens to all that plastic after we're done using it. Today, we're also going to be talking about how plastic production worldwide is harming the health of many communities, especially many BIPOC communities here in the United States. We will also go into detail about how recycling works and what happens to all that plastic garbage that doesn't and cannot be recycled. The story of today's plastics begins with the fossil fuel industry. Plastics are made from oil, which comes from the life that existed millions of years ago, such as plants and animals that lie deep inside of our earth. Plastic is one of the many products that are made within a refinery plant, where oil enters a series of chemical reactions to produce plastic, gasoline, diesel, and many other fuels. Today, fossil fuel companies can be seen around the world, and the refinery plants where plastics are made contribute to the environmental pollution, releasing many toxic chemicals into the air and water to the nearby communities that live and work around these large factories. On the screen is a simplified version of how raw oil is made into plastic. The remains of dinosaurs that once roamed this planet millions of years ago today are known as oil. The same oil that lies deep beneath our feet is extracted and manipulated to create an inorganic material which we call plastic. Plastic, as we already know, can be shaped into basically anything and these raw pellets are the basis for almost every single plastic you have ever come across here on Earth. In this picture, these pellets are actually used to make dinosaur plastic toys from the very same materials made from dinosaur remains. Here is a landscape that I'm sure all of you have come across. These massive installations is where oil is extracted from deep inside the ground. While many of these can be seen from miles away, some of these extraction sites can be hidden within major cities and even within neighborhoods. These extraction sites also release a ton of toxic chemicals, which are often disguised with fragrances to prevent local communities from realizing that they live across a hidden oil well. After the oil is extracted, it then needs to be transported to a refinery plant, which may not be in the same location. These are the pipelines that transport that crude oil to factories where it'll then be processed into several products, including plastics. Many of these pipelines extend for miles and across native territories, rivers, lakes, and many other natural environments. These pipelines are not only invasive, but they also threaten natural resources such as food and water security, while threatening the health of many BIPOC communities as these pipelines have been known to break and pollute and destroy land, its natural resources, and the health of many communities. Today, many communities have taken a stand against the fossil fuel industry, including present-day actions led by indigenous groups to stop pipeline construction and uphold indigenous rights in the wake of the climate crisis. On the screen are four pictures of the dangers of oil pipelines and its ruptures which have occurred around the world and here in the United States. Here are only a few of the man-made disasters which have occurred in history, and with plastic production increasing in the next few years, it can be said that we can expect a lot more of these man-made disasters if we don't enact policy and continue to rely on products derived from fossil fuels, including plastics. Extraction sites, pipelines, and refinery plants present a constant threat to our environment and wildlife. They also poison the communities that live and work near these large operations. Spontaneous nosebleeds, body spasms and headaches, even stomach pains and other health problems are the symptoms that many people and communities are experiencing due to the proximity of living near an oil extraction site. Exposure to crude oil, petroleum products and its vapors have been known to cause cancer, birth defects and even reproductive issues in many individuals who are exposed to the fumes of extraction sites. Many of these extraction sites are hidden in major cities, such as Los Angeles, where they are disguised as offices to prevent public awareness. Many of these neighborhoods are made up of BIPOC communities, also known as communities of color, which are the ones mostly affected by the contamination produced and emitted by these large factories. Many of these communities don't have the resources to move out of the area, let alone fight the big oil companies that continue to poison them. These large companies continue to pollute our air and our water from the toxic fumes of oil refinement. They also pollute our cities and oceans worldwide through their plastic products. Displayed on the screen are tiny pellets which are produced in oil refinery plants. These small pellets are called nurdles and they make the basis for almost every plastic product you have ever come in contact. 
these small plastic pellets are melted and shaped to produce almost anything from single-use plastic products to car parts. Many of these small pellets are often released into waterways and natural environments during transportation and production. These small sized pellets can be found on beaches among with other plastic debris posing a threat to water quality and our wildlife. Most of these items end up here and corporations invest a lot of money to bring these products into low income communities. These items are low quality plastics which may break really easily and often contain high levels of lead and other chemicals which can lead to severe health problems. So what happens to a plastic item once we're done using it? Well, there are three different routes a plastic item could take, and it could either end up at a recycling center, a landfill or incinerator, or end up as plastic pollution and erosions and in our natural environment. But these plastics are treated very differently depending on where they end up. So let's take a closer look at these three different possible routes. One of the best possible routes a plastic could take is actually to the recycling center. Now there exist seven different kinds of plastics and although all of them have the chasing arrow signs, only some of these plastics are recyclable. Today, less than 10% of all plastics worldwide are actually recycled properly. So the recycling bin should not be the place where you put all your different kinds of plastics that you come across. So please remember to check with your local area and your local recycling center to see what kinds of plastics you can recycle in your recycling bin. Recycling the appropriate plastics will help reduce the recyclable plastics that end up in our landfills, our incinerators, and even in our natural environment. The plastics that do end up getting recycled properly end up as park benches and park tables. While many other plastics are downcycled to make rugs, clothes, and everyday products. This is an example of plastic water bottles being downcycled to make some kind of thread that can be used to make clothes and different kinds of products. In this case, these bottles were used to make swim shorts made out of recycled polyester. A landfill is a place to dispose of all your waste. It is a giant hole that gets filled with trash and then covered with soil. Landfills are a very normal way to get rid of your waste around the world, but sadly, most plastics end up in the landfill, even the plastics that can be recycled, due to being placed in the wrong bin. As plastics sit in the landfill, they slowly get compacted among other debris and layers of junk. Rainwater then flows through the waste, absorbs all the water-soluble compounds, and creates a highly toxic juice. Think of all the crazy things people throw away in the garbage bin. Things like electronics, harmful chemicals, and even used oil. When mixed with rainwater, this creates leachate, which is a toxic juice, which can move into groundwater, soils, streams, poisoning ecosystems, wildlife, and even communities that live near these landfills. Depending on where you live, some plastic and trash might get sent to an incinerator before ending up in a landfill. Incineration is a process where all trash, doesn't matter if it's recyclable or toxic, is burned to control waste and provide energy. These industrial incinerators provide steam energy, but at the cost of creating toxic pollution through its emissions. In many countries, it has become really popular to burn your waste, and industries have even greenwashed this practice by using the heat produced to generate electricity. This electricity is used to power homes, calling it renewable, and incinerators are expensive and contribute to climate change by emitting CO2. Incinerators are often located in poor communities which suffer from toxic products that are often burned and released into the surrounding environment. Now I want to thank all of you for joining today's lesson of Trash Academy and I hope to see you real soon. My name is Eliseo and hasta luego.